Let's see. I think the first thing we're going to play is um, a piano piece originally by Eric Satie. So it's about 100 years old. And then the second thing we're going to play is another piano piece about, I think, from the <coughs> 80s by Philip Glass. Uh, first piano piece, the Satie, is called a Nyasien. And uh, which, if you wonder what a Nyasien is, um, it would be a dance from the Isle of Nyasos, which is a Greek island. Uh, but it's certainly not any kind of folkloric music. It's sati, and he was a bit of a, he was a bit of a, I don't know, I don't know if I'd call him a surrealist, but a little bit of a uh, humorous figure in, in French music. He used to write things on the scores. Uh, you know how in classical music you write little directions about how to play things at certain places, like, uh, you know, louder, more softly, slow down, <coughs> and he would write things like uh, from the back of your head, um, and he would write, uh, yeah, he would write things like that. So nobody really knows what he meant by it, but um, I think that's the point. So we're going to do this Nyasien by Satie, and then we're going to play a Metamorphosis by Philip Glass. That's when Philip Glass wrote these really important minimalist pieces that, um, uh, that people really associate with particularly the motives that he wrote with his style of music, which is the that sort of thing. And then we're going to finish with um, some French Renaissance dances, a little suite of them, uh, by Pierre Attagnan. So that's music from about like 1500, maybe 1503, something like that. Um, Are we doing both Nassian? Uh, we'll do we'll just do okay. one Nassian. You're not the piano there, right? No. Okay. I'm gonna balance it here while we play. <laughs>
Yeah, that's an interesting thing uh, Kenny was just saying. Um, so one of the, I suppose, interesting things about the way that we perform music is um, uh, for many years I've traveled all around the world playing in the street. Um, I mean, I play concerts too, but I've played in the street probably, you know, thousands and thousands of times and all over the world. and. Um, Last summer, uh, I was over in Spain and Portugal with Kenny playing. And normally when we play out in the street, we play like Renaissance music and um, some Celtic music that, that we've arranged and recorded and, uh, um, and Baroque music. But, um, you know, we both love Philip Glass's music. But uh, I've never seen anybody playing Philip Glass music in the street. Um, I'm sure someone has, uh, but uh, but I'd never thought of really doing it. And um, we started doing it when we were in. Uh, we started doing this piece when we were in Porto, Portugal, and um, it was amazing because we play in a big uh, open square by the river. And um, whenever we would start playing this piece people, hundreds of people would just like stop uh, and listen and they really seemed to relate to this music and of course they did because his music is, you know, I mean it's fair to say it's ubiquitous. It's his, his the sound of this music has, first of all it's been in a, so many films and that's where people hear music now a lot and, um, and, and the other thing that I thought was really cool was that people didn't really know what it, that, a lot of people knew what it was, but there were a lot of people who knew what this music sounded like and related to it, but they had no idea what it was. And, uh, you know, as a classical musician, when you can do that, um, I don't know, it's tr It's the same for blues and rock and roll too. I mean, if you played rock and roll and you played some old, you know, Howlin' Wolf uh, blues tune and 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 people just said you know wow what a great what a great song that is you know you'd you'd be you'd be sort of doing the same thing um, so anyway uh, yeah this this tur this one turned out to be quite popular even though I don't, I don't know if the if the mood is what exactly I would call uh, what people came to uh, their Portuguese vacation for. You know? <laughs> So I'm glad I took a pause before I play it because when I play this one, usually it takes about 20 minutes for the feeling to return to my hands afterwards. <laughs> Thank you. 
scared you there. I was yeah, like, okay, you can play it. So anyway, here's something from 500 years ago, back when the French were funky. <laughs>
to play one uh, one uh, eleven string guitar solo. Um, but Kenny Butler on the violin here. Um, so anyway, uh, yeah, this is a strange guitar. Yes, it is. It has eleven strings. Um, why eleven? The answer is, like most of those questions in life, why not, right? Um, uh, I had a six string guitar and uh, I wanted to, I do a lot of arranging as you can see and um, I always found myself wishing that I had like other bass strings and also that my guitar started up higher than an E and then I discovered the lute and the lute uh, is exactly such an instrument. Uh, so I thought I wanted to play the lute and I gave it a go but it's sort of like um, I, think, I bet it's a lot like if you play tennis and you try to play with a squash racket. It's close, but it's different enough so that it's pretty disorienting playing a lute with the double strings and everything. So I designed this weird guitar when I was 20 years old and had this friend build it for me and uh, because I'm not a builder, that's for sure. And uh, he's a wonderful builder. His name's Walter Stanel. And he built this beautiful sounding guitar uh, just like I wanted it. So anyway, and uh, why is it called an arch guitar? Again, why not? Um, because uh, you have to call it something. And uh, back in the Renaissance, when they started adding strings to the lutes, they called them in Italian archiluto, right? An arch lute. Or they would, or or, or if they were calling it a chitarra, they would add strings to it and call it a chitarrone, which. If you look up what that translates to, it's basically arch guitar. So I thought, well, that's what I'm doing. I'm adding strings to the six string guitar and, for the same reasons. And so I call it an arch guitar. Anyway, uh, so uh, I'm going to play some music by John Dowland. Uh, he was a contemporary of Shakespeare's. And um, they have a description of uh, by a great poet, um, uh, Spencer, of listening to Dowland play, and it said, uh, Dowland, whose touch upon the lute doth ravish the senses. So that's sort of what you're going for when you play this music, ravishing the senses. So. It's a high bar, uh, <laughs> true, and, uh, but, you know, it's good to have something to, to he head for, you know? So this one's called um, Lady Rich's Galliard, Lady Penelope Rich. She was the money behind the poetry in the Elizabethan court. She was a, a very wealthy woman who loved a lot of wonderful Eliz Elizabethan artists and made sure that they had clothes and didn't get their heads cut off and stuff like that. So. <laughs> Pretty cool person in my boy. Yeah. <laughs>
I don't know. You guys, but I was blown away. I don't know. Thank you.